Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. Emotional appeals on climate can be terrifying. Are we experiencing a nightly walk through the book of revelations? Or is that hype? Many people paint the issue as black and white. And in fact, there's a psychologist who has a plan to scare people into climate action. But is that based on evidence of climate change? When we look at the evidence about climate change, we find there are six facts suggesting that people are exaggerating things for commercial interests in big climate. Now, you might say, well, who are you to question the 97% consensus by scientists on climate? Well, we, Friends of Science, are a small group of qualified Earth, atmospheric, and solar scientists and professional engineers who for 16 years have questioned climate hysteria. We question it because the evidence does not support the claims. We looked at the best known consensus surveys and we found it's not true that there's a consensus, not at all. Only a very small group of scientists agree with the crisis view and most scientists do agree. There has been some warming since the 1800s, but the cause is disputed. Is it humankind or nature? And in fact, the author of one of the 97% consensus studies, after completing the research, said, I'm actually more neutral on the issue now. The entire process has been an exercise in re-educating myself about the climate debate. And in the process, I can honestly say that I've heard very convincing arguments from all the different sides. So, there's so much gray area when you begin to mix science and politics, environmental issues and social issues, calculated rational thinking with emotions. That's from M.K. Zimmerman, whose thesis was entitled The Consensus on the Consensus. So when we peel back the climate crisis claims and we look deeply at the evidence, we find there's good news. There's every reason to be optimistic about future climate and our life on Earth. In the 1970s, there was a rise in carbon dioxide concentration and warming that appeared to be in lockstep. That's when people assumed that carbon dioxide drove that warming. But Earth scientists and solar scientists, most of them did not agree then, and our people did not agree, because climate is a very complex, messy, or wicked puzzle. And today we see that warming has flatlined, and temperature changes claimed as the hottest year ever are usually very, very small. So here's six points to consider in your climate change discussions. One, climate has changed in a cyclical pattern of warming and cooling for thousands of years. If there will be additional warming from greenhouse gas emissions, that is projected by most experts to likely be only a tiny 0.7 degrees Celsius between now and 2100. But how much is that? Well, that's less than one degree on this thermometer. Less than one degree over 81 years. How can that be a crisis? In a single day in Calgary, temperatures can go from minus 20 to plus 20 when there's a Chinook wind. Is it realistic to think that less than a degree of warming, which is well within the realm of a margin of error, is a crisis? Though people like to say warming is global, in fact, every region of the world has its own unique climate factors. Warming of about a degree will be beneficial to the northern countries, and it may only have nominal impact on hotter countries. In fact, where do people from winter countries go to vacation or retire? They go south, where it's warm. However, there are some indicators that suggest a cooling period may be in process. While the IPCC SR15 report urged that we limit global average temperature rise by 2100 to 1.5 degrees centigrade, according to NASA's GISS data, Earth has already cooled by one third of that amount, by half a degree in the last three years alone. Point two, 
In cold countries like Canada or Northern Europe, Scandinavia, there are many benefits to warming. Some of the Northern Hemisphere features cold, cold winters. So slight warming reduces heating costs and provides for a better growing season. Point number three. CO2 enhances plant growth. NASA satellite surveillance shows that CO2 increase has fertilized plants, dramatically increasing and enhancing crop yields and forest growth. Point number four, people often claim sea level rise will destroy coastal cities or small islands. But in most cases, the land area of ocean coasts and tropical islands are increasing. Sea levels on coasts are affected by land subsidence, groundwater withdrawals, changes of silt patterns, and land erosion. Remember that some 68 million people a year land at Schiphol Airport in the Netherlands, which is three meters below sea level. No one seems alarmed about that. Point number five. We're often told that weather will become more extreme. But in fact, the worst storms and most erratic weather was in the Little Ice Age, so frightening that people were burned at the stake as witches for committing the crime of weather cooking with the help of Satan. Warming trends actually reduces storm intensity. And finally, for most agriculture-based and industrialized nations, warming is net economically beneficial to society. In fact, while many people say that the Nobel laureate William Nordhaus has a plan that we should follow, Robert Murphy's assessment shows it would cost something like $14 trillion. And while doing nothing would only cause $3 trillion in projected damage. So economically, it would be better to do nothing. So why don't you ever hear about this? Why only from us? Well, there is a group of green billionaires who have funded environmental groups for millions and millions of dollars every year for a decade to push their vested interest plan for global cap and trade, carbon taxes, and renewables. According to Matthew Nisbet's study, these green billionaires have also been funders of academic work and nonprofit journalism. So, you can see why you never hear the scientific views that we've just described. Our voice is drowned out by big climate and big green. So there's every reason to feel calm and optimistic about life on Earth and future climate, and our ability to adapt to whatever changes may come. As a society, we should be prepared for warming or cooling. We should be prepared to respond to extreme weather events. They've always happened and always will. And we should not be scared into climate action by people who are not willing to discuss these six points that I just made. Make sure you bring up these points when people talk with you about climate change. Demand open, civil debate on climate. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.